Hi friends, this is Muhammad Gibran and welcome to our C++ tutorials. Till now we have seen how to write some simple C++ programs. But the programs which we wrote were actually not the way a C++ program is written. A C++ program uses classes and objects to define a program. So what is a class? Class is collection of objects. Let us take example of our college class to explain the C++ classes. A C++ class is also like our college class as it also has some objects which are students in this example. Each student has some common properties like roll number, name, address, etc. All the students will definitely have these properties. The values may be different but each student will have these properties. Let us see some more things about the classes and the objects. A class is a user defined data type to implement an abstract object. Abstract means to hide the details. A class is a combination of data and functions. Data is called as data members and functions are called as member functions. Data member or member functions may be public, private or protected. These are their visibilities in throughout the, a program. When you define a member function or a vari member variable as public then it means that the member variable can be used inside the class and outside the class also like in different classes or in main function. When you define the visibility as private then it means that the functions and members can't be used outside the class. When you define it as protected then the data members and data functions member functions can be used in the same class and its derived classes. By default the visibility of a C++ variable is private. So this is how a C++ programs looks like with a class. So these are all our header files iostream.h, studio.h. This is, this is how you define a class. You use the keyword class with the class name which should be this one. In this example our class name is student. This is how you start your class with a brace. Then you give the variables or the member, uh, member variables in the class that is first one will be integer, roll number, character, name. Then close the class, give a semicolon. Remember this semicolon is very important. Many times we forgot this uh, semicolon and it creates lots of trouble. So always remember whenever you close a class don't forget to give this semicolon. Then our main, func main function starts from here. What we are doing is we are calling we are using this keyword or our class name class to create an object of this class. So this s will have two properties that is roll number and name. So we can store two things in this S. Those are roll number and name. So how we use this? We will display to the user to enter the roll number. Then we will enter the roll number and we will store it in S dot roll number. We will store it in the roll number of S. This dot operator specifies where does the value should go. It is saying S dot roll number. The roll number should go to the roll number of s object then likewise we are doing it for the name s dot name and now simply we are displaying it c out roll number c out name here we are just displaying it but the problem over here is if you run this program this program won't work because as I told you earlier you have not given any visibility for this roll number and name so by default they are private so how do we solve this problem the solution of this problem is simple. You just need to add this keyword public before your variables. And now you can use your variable, roll number and name anywhere in this class and this main function. Then how do you define a member function inside the class? So let us see. These are our header files. Then we have again our class keyword then the class name then our class starts then the 
our two variables roll number and name then these are our public now the public section starts and now we are defining a function which is get data so how do you define a function return type that is void over here return type function name then parenthesis opening and closing closing then in our get data what are we doing we are printing all this thing so what is this we are in telling the user to get uh, to enter the roll number then we are storing it in s dot roll number like we did in the previous program same we are saving the name s dot name then in our put data we are going to display whatever the data user has entered what we are doing roll number of s dot roll number then we are putting the name from s dot name then in main function what we are doing is we are just calling the two functions that is get data and put data so what it does is whenever whenever your program runs it reads from void main then it sees that you have created an created an object of the class student so there is the class it goes and says okay i got the class and this where the object name is s okay so this is the object of this class so what you are doing you are saying s dot get data so it says okay this is the object he knows so and what is then he has to do that he has to get the get data function so he again goes and search for get data where is that oh i got it he got it over here then he does whatever return inside this braces what he does it prints the this statement on the screen then it stores the roll number then this statement is printed and stores the name then when this function is completed it again comes back to the main function and it goes to the next line then our program says as dot put data and now it again goes and search where is put data defined as we have given a semicolon so he has to search for put data he is go he goes back and search for the put data then he finds okay this is the put data so what does he has to do he has to do this and what's that he has to display the roll number and the name so after displaying that it comes back and your program finishes so this is how you define the member functions inside the class and now how to define the member functions outside the class the program is the same we have we have two variables integer and name and now we have two functions that is get data put data but if you observe in last program we have not used this semicolons after writing the name of the functions and this braces but now we are giving this semicolons just because we are not defining the functions over here we are just declaring so what does a compiler read it when you give a semicolon when the compiler runs your uh, reads your programs from this 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 then it comes to this line it says it reads this line okay there is a function with the name get data but when he sees this semicolon then it say it then it uh, assumes that there is a function in this program with the name get data which will be defined later on but you have just defined uh, declared it that there will be a function in the program with with the name get data again when it comes over here it again sees this semicolon and then he assumes that somewhere in the program a put data function will be defined so he has to wait till he understand what is that and then here our class closes semicolon class ends now here we are defining our member functions how return type class name scope resolution operator that is colons two colons then the function name open and close parenthesis now here we are not giving the semicolon because here we are defining it so we don't need to give the semicolon over here again in this braces we have to explain or define our function what does this function will do over this function will again take the roll number and the name and it will store it in name and the roll number respectively then again we are defining our put data function same like our get data return type 
क्लास नेम स्कोप रेजोल्यूशन ऑपरेटर देन फंक्शन नेम ओपन एंड क्लोज ब्रेस देन डिफाइन योर फंक्शन लाइक दिस व्हाट यू विल डू यू विल प्रिंट इट नाउ अगेन व्हेन यू पुट दिस यू क्रिएट अ ऑब्जेक्ट विद दिस क्लास एंड देन यू जस्ट कॉल द मेंबर फंक्शंस दैट इज गेट डेटा and it will go and read this get data function after this get data function is completed it will come back over here and then it will read this next line when it read this line it will find that there is another use of another function that is put data and it will again go to the put data function and it will read it out and it will does whatever you have said so this is how you define a member function outside the class function overloading there is another concept known as function overloading in c++ that is you can use the same function name for different things you can give the same name to the function which can do many different tasks in this example we are taking the area as our function name the return type of our function is integer and uh, we are taking two arguments that is int x int y so here we are adding these both variables and we are returning the value here again the same function name is used area with the values which are float type the return the value will be float type so the return type the return of the return type of this function will be also float so again we are adding the same thing we are doing the sum of x and y but the difference between these two is the value written by this function will be an integer type while this function will return of unfloat value so what we are doing in the main function we are calling the area function with the integer values 5 and 6 and in the second statement we are calling again the area function with the float or decimal values so the first time when this area function is called the f the 5 and 6 as they are integers the first uh, function will be called as 5 will go and get replaced in place of x and 6 will be getting stored in place of y so now when 5 comes from here till here and 6 comes from here till here then in this function this now here we have 5 and here we have 6 so when it goes in this function it writes here 5 and here 6 so what will it return it will return simple 11 and now again when you come over this second line when it's when it is calling the same function name but with the different arguments it is called it is sending the values as 7.5 and 4.3 then it will not go to this function it will go to this function and it will write float 7.5 and float 4.3 so what it will do again here in this return it will write 7.5 and in the place of value it will write 4.3 then it will return the value by adding these two variables so this is known as function overloading in c++ that is using the same function name for different operations here the operation was of different data type we did the same operation but on different data types see this is another example of function overloading you can give these values dynamically if you have the value you can change over here and you just pass a b c d these values will be stored over here in a then here in place of a the 5 will be stored and when this a is sent to this integer type function then in place of x 5 is written here also and the same story re uh, repeats over here like we saw in the last slide so this was all regarding a function in c++ how you define functions inside the class outside the class it will be about objects and the classes if you didn't
didn't understand all this stuff quite nicely so nothing to worry soon we will be explaining them in detail in the upcoming videos this was just an introduction to them if you did not understand them don't be worried there are many videos to will be coming to explain all this stuff so thanks for watching guys hope you liked our video